welcome to the channel of Ecoholics. So today I'm bringing you one very important concept of consumer surplus, which every one of us learned in microeconomics. But to find the consumer surplus, we sometimes struggle because we cannot get it through the diagram. So I'm here to present you a mathematical method with the help of which you can calculate consumer surplus very easily. But before directly jumping to the method, let us understand what is actually consumer surplus over here. So let's see. So consumer surplus refers to the difference between the amount the consumer is paying and the amount he is willing to pay. So we have one willingness to pay the maximum amount I can pay for that good. Whereas what is the market price which I'm actually paying. So the willingness to pay if it is greater than the equilibrium market price which I'm paying. In that case I will be having some kind of surplus for me. Why? Because I will feel oh I was thinking that I might have to pay 100 rupees for purchasing it. But I'm just paying 60 rupees. So in my own sense, in my own welfare, I will feel my 40 rupees has been saved. So this is the concept of consumer surplus over here. It is a measure of consumer welfare. Whenever we talk about the consumer welfare in a market, that how is the welfare of consumers going? What is their exact welfare? Are they being exploited by the monopolist or other things? The consumer surplus is that one concept through which I can measure the amount of welfare given to the consumers in any market. It happens, the consumer surplus can only happen whenever the price paid by consumer is less than the price he is willing to pay. As I told you, whenever it will be higher, there will be some kind of difference which is going to be known as your consumer surplus over here. So let's try to understand it diagrammatically. So I have a diagram for my consumer surplus over here. So this is a diagram of the demand curve and the supply curve. So we are going to understand which area is going to represent the consumer surplus over here. So the market equilibrium is achieved whenever the demand and supply curve intersect each other, wherever they are equal. So this is the point of equilibrium. So at this point, this is my equilibrium quantity. And corresponding to that, this is my equilibrium price. So my consumer was ready to pay this price for zero quantity because the demand curve is starting from here. Zero quantity, the price he is willing to pay is at this point where the demand curve is starting. So this is the maximum price he is willing to pay. Now he is just paying this price. So the difference of price is not just the consumer surplus. Now he is not paying paying this price till these number of units which he is consuming because he is consuming these number of units. So he is not paying the difference of price for this thing. But as you can see the demand curve is downward sloping. So as he is going to consume more units of any good, he is willing to pay less and less price over here. So we have to find the consumer surplus in term of this difference of prices and the number of unit he is going to consume. So this green triangle I have here is my consumer surplus. All right. Now when we have a look at the question of consumer surplus, we start deriving or we start calculating the area of triangle. What we usually do is we do this thing half of base so we find this thing base, which will be my quantity into height. So the price difference, price he is willing to pay minus the market price he is going to pay. So he tries to get this thing. It is all right. It is a good idea if the question is simple. But sometimes what happens is the equation of demand curve or the supply of demand curve is not easy. So it's not easier to first find their intersection or maybe if we can find their point of intersection, it's not easy easier to get the idea of consumer surplus due to different reasons. Maybe because of different uh, difficult calculation values I'm getting. So what's the rescue over there? So I can calculate the consumer surplus with the help of integration, which you can use for every type of equation for consumer surplus, even if it is in log form, 
even if it is in exponential form or what not. Because when it comes in log or exponential, which is a rare chance, but the extreme I'm talking. So you can use the integration method in cases of extreme also. All right. So how to calculate it using integration? If we come here, come back to the before getting a look at this equation, if we come back to the slide over here, what we have to calculate. So integration always give me the area under the curve, right? So if I try to get the area under the demand curve, I don't want that whole area because the whole area is not consumer surplus. I just want this triangle. So I want, I, I want the area under this line, but up to this point only. If I try to integrate the whole demand curve, I will be getting the whole area below this red line over here, but I don't want that. So what my approach will be from this demand curve equation, if I can subtract this area, I can subtract this area, I will be getting my required triangle over here. So coming back to the equation on this page, this is exactly what I'm doing. So my first task would be to find this equilibrium point so that I can get my equilibrium quantity and my equilibrium price. So after getting my equilibrium price, and my equilibrium quantity over here, I need to move to this integration equation. So fx is the demand curve equation given to us. So I am integrating my demand curve because after integrating your demand curve, you are going to get the whole area below this red line. But from that, I am subtracting. So this integration is going to work till here, right? So after the integration, I'm subtracting P naught X naught, where P naught X naught are nothing. They are just my equilibrium prices and my equilibrium quantity. So from the integration of my demand curve, I will be subtracting this area. Now you will wonder that I have integrated till here. So by subtracting, what about this area? How will I subtract it? So the one thing is you have to integrate this red line, your demand curve only up to the equilibrium quantity, only up to X naught. So you are going to integrate from here till here. So from this whole area, if I subtract this, I will be left with my consumer surplus. So that is my approach here. As you can see, integration, I'm starting from zero till equilibrium quantity. Integrated my demand curve, minus that rectangular area, which I have to pay because P naught X naught is nothing. It is the revenue of the producer. You are paying P naught, you're consuming X naught. So this is the revenue. You have to pay it. It's not your surplus. It's instead the surplus of producer. So this is how you can calculate consumer surplus with the help of integration. And this technique is going to help you in the cases where you get a little difficult demand curves or where you cannot solve for the consumer surplus because you cannot draw diagrams or maybe because of another reasons. If you find this video useful, please like it, share it among your friends, subscribe to the channel. Thank you everyone for watching.